celebrated ever since September 1980. We celebrate on the 27th of September since 1980 as World Prison Day. It is an occasion marking the achievements of the industry as well as projecting the future of the sector. The theme this year, as most of you are aware, is rethinking tourism. And as we are all aware, we are just coming out of the COVID pandemic. And this crisis was coupled with other challenges of natural disasters, floods, landslides, and other challenges of, over the globe. Now, the theme of rethinking tourism is therefore timely and opportune at a time when the world has fully opened up. This conference has convened us as government, as development partners, as the private sector, as other uh, agencies of government to contemplate the strategic direction of tourism in this era. Tourism is on a recovery trend, but we all agree that we ought to do a lot to double our efforts in achieving this growth and we cannot do it alone. We thank our partners, most especially those who have supported this conference. Uh, in a special way, I would like to recognize UNDP. I would like to recognize the World Bank through the Competitiveness and Enterprise Development Project who have supported this. I would like to recognize WWF, PSFU, KCCA, Smart Card Foundation, and all those that have supported this event. And of course, Sheraton Hotel, our partner as well. It is a challenging time for government at this time, and therefore, this support comes in very, very timely and we deeply appreciate. We welcome the tourism program partners, and we know that this, we are looking forward to listening to the different panel discussions the discussants, the panelists, and gaining from your knowledge and experience. It will be quite a long day full of exciting activities, and we all look forward to having a great interaction with all of you. I thank you all for coming, and I'd like to take this opportunity to welcome the minister to deliver his opening remarks. On this day, the entire tourism fraternity focuses on the progress and challenges of the industry. And in a special way, we celebrate the power of tourism in transforming the social economic landscape of the world. The chosen theme, as already pronounced by the peers when she was here, is rethinking tourism and it underscores the importance of tourism in the social economic transformation of the country and the need to refocus the development strategy in the wake of the post-COVID pandemic. Tourism, to me, is really like a living organism. It's fragile sensitive disruptions. It recovers, then it lives on, it peaks, it becomes vibrant, and it takes off like that. Uganda, and indeed the whole world over, has most recently had the misfortune of dealing with one or more of these disruptions. And even as we talk today, there is some disruption outside this. The theme is therefore an opportunity as we recover from the most consequential health crisis of our time. The environment disaster of increased water levels are now receding, and the electoral cycle in the region, in the African region, peacefully completed. Now we are stabilizing. 
worldwide, the tourism economy is opening, and all destinations are, cram are scrambling to regain the lost share. It's very important to regain that lost share, and we must fight for it. The competition for the visitors is now very high, and we need to be more innovative and aggressive to survive in this new dispensation. I'm glad that the composition of participants in this conference comprises the sectors and the key drivers of the tourism economy. And I welcome the public sector leadership, the captains of the industry that invest and operate in the sector, the development partners that support our efforts, and the academia that analyze the trends and propose new approaches to development and the development of the sector and the industry. We need this communication to reassess the status quo, reboot the tourist economy, and think our strategic direction in driving growth and development. Our discussion today covers a number of topical areas, including the smart city tourism, new approaches to job creation, harnessing opportunities through digital innovation. This rethink of tourism should stimulate us to draw strategic interventions that will guide the sector growth moving forward. I'm glad that we shall be receiving distinguished friends, and some of them are ministers in the government of Uganda. Our main presenter is going to be the Honorable Frank Tuguebaze, colleague, and has served in a number of portfolios in Uganda, very, very vibrant. He has been minister uh, in the Kampala Capital City Authority, as you know very well, and that explains maybe the presence of the executive director. He has also been a minister of uh, ICT. He was recently minister for gender, labor, and social development. And now he's minister of agriculture, <coughs> and more industry, and fisheries. And he's an investor. And he's also a very active investor in this sector. We look forward to the perspectives you draw from this experience passion in the industry to set the pace for discussion. And I'm sure it's about to get here. Ministers don't get late. They are already delaying. <laughs> they are delaying. They don't get late. So he's delayed. As a sector, we are on the path of rethinking tourism and already our efforts have started bearing fruits. For instance, we have intensified our domestic tourism drives with the aim of creating awareness about the beauty of this country and encouraging the locals to tour their country. As the young lady who was praying here, the pastor, when she was praying, you could see how much she knows already about her country. At the beginning of this year, we launched the Pan of Africa Destination Grant as a strategy to communicate and improve Uganda's visibility in the domestic and international market. This brand has received positive reception, and the initiative has won accolades like the 2022 Grand Prix Award and the International Tourism Film Festival, 
ITFF Africa. We embrace and call upon the world to explore Uganda, the part of Africa. It is a positive trend in the recovery of tourism numbers, visiting the country, and consequently, the tourist receipts. An 8.4% recovery was registered 2021, and the outlook is positive 2022. Since the reopening of the economy, a number of promotional initiatives have been made by the private sector. We congratulate these efforts, we applaud them, and encourage more in this drive to recover the market. As you all know, the financial year started on a difficult economic footing for all governments. We therefore extend our gratitude to the development partners and allow me to particularly thank the United Nations Development Program, SEDEP, WWF, and PSFU MasterCard for your support in making this event succeed. I wish you fruitful deliberations and invite all participants to freely exchange knowledge, experiences to enable us achieve the mission to become Africa's most preferred destination. I declare the conference open and urge you all to explore Uganda, the power of Africa. Now it's cool. I am delighted to join you today as we stand together to commemorate the United Nations World Tourism Day under the theme, Rethinking Tourism. Allow me to extend a vote of thanks, Honorable Minister, to the Government of Uganda, and in particular to the Ministry of Tourism, Wildlife and Antiquities, for generously inviting UNDP to co-host with you this national commemoration. I also thank each one of you for making the time to participate in this national celebration. I bring you greetings from Madame Elsia Tafua, the United Nations Development Program Resident Representative who is out of the country on official business. But she is celebrating with us today. This World Tourism Day 2022 is a unique occasion to amplify the conversation about the sector's role in economic recovery and growth. It is an opportunity for a diverse range of tourism stakeholders, including the public sector, media, academia, development partners, and businesses, to celebrate achievements, to share best practices, and to explore how they can be more inclusive as the tourism industry regains its growth momentum. Honorable Minister, distinguished guests, before the outbreak of the COVID-19 pandemic, the tourism industry had demonstrated its resilience and job creation capacity, that it was a powerful lever to fight against poverty and to promote the social and economic inclusion of all groups. COVID-19 pandemic has had a devastating social and economic impact in all countries. And even here in Uganda, the economy has also been significantly impacted, with an additional 300,000 persons falling into poverty. And this is from official statistics. The tourism industry has not been spared and continues to suffer. And we are all now watching what happens with this Ebola outbreak and its impact on the sector. Historically, tourism has shown a strong ability to adapt to innovate and to recover from adversity. And while domestic tourism continues to drive recovery of the sector in Uganda, international tourism is also experiencing a strong rebound with tourist arrivals increasing. 521,000 uh, tourist arrivals were recorded in 2021. With the right policies and programs and an enabling environment, 
Tourism can once again provide decent jobs, contribute to building resilient, sustainable, gender equal, inclusive econ economies and societies that work for everyone. UNDP commends the government of Uganda for the efforts to bolster the tourism industry. Notably, the institutionalization of COVID-19 resilient tourism marketing strategy, curated to enhance market presence in key source markets and to create destination awareness in domestic, regional and international markets. The government has also put in place a stimulus package to provide structured business recovery and resilient support for the tourism private sector. Additionally, the government has provided a two-year waiver of the value-added tax to upcountry hotels, and also the promotion of domestic tourism through the digital-led Take on the Pearl of Africa campaign as a mechanism to cushion and revive the industry amidst shocks of this nature. These are all commendable efforts. So, Honorable Minister, distinguished guests, this year's theme of rethinking tourism prompts all of us to reflect and reassess where tourism is going, where we want it to go, and how we want it to get there. We must all collectively learn from the lessons in the past, especially now that the world is opening up again and international tourism is making a progressive rebound. World Tourism Day affords us the opportunity to look beyond tourism statistics and acknowledge that behind every number, there is a person. So this means putting people and planet first and bringing all stakeholders together, including local communities, around a shared vision for a more sustainable, inclusive and resilient sector. Allow me to share a few thoughts on how UNDP is within the framework of our country program for Uganda within the framework of the United Nations Sustainable Development Corporation Framework 2021 to 2025, which is aligned to the third national development plan, how we are complementing and co-creating and scaling up nature and technology-based solutions to accelerate efforts to overcome the disruption that was occasioned by COVID. One, UNDP is partnering with the private sector to deploy solutions and responses that mitigate the social economic impacts of the pandemic on businesses, jobs, and livelihoods, especially among the youth and women. We have, as UNDP, invested close to $1.5 million in supporting youth and women-owned tourism, micro, small, and medium enterprises to develop and implement innovative products and solutions that aid recovery from the impact of the COVID pandemic. Two. COVID-19 revealed the need to rethink the competitiveness and resilience models of the tourism industry. So UNDP has partnered with the Ministry of Tourism, Wildlife and Antiquities, Uganda Tourism Board, Uganda Wildlife Authority, the private sector and cultural institutions to harness nature and culture, to diversify Uganda's tourism product range and build a resilient tourism industry. Three. UNDP is also fostering platforms for inclusive dialogue to identify solutions to realize the potential of tourism as a vehicle for recovery. Through these platforms, the message of tourism as an inspirational and transformational force is amplified to ensure that tourism is a central part of policy making and solutions to realign tourism for the future are co-created. UNDP has also supported new products for example, the promotion of mountain tourism as a means for environmental protection and promoting ecotourism, including support to new products like they just concluded the first ever Renzori Marathon. So these are only some of the initiatives that we are working on with various stakeholders. Honorable ministers, distinguished guests, in conclusion, I would like to reiterate UNDP's commitment to partner with the Ministry of Tourism, Wildlife and Antiquities, with Uganda Tourism Board, with all the stakeholders, all the development partners, to harness the power and potential of tourism to advance prosperity and drive inclusive, sustainable development in Uganda. Happy Tourism Day. I thank you.
the chairperson of the board of UTB, Honorable Dewudi Magiriko, the country director of UNDP, for the deputy, uh, private sector investors in the tourism sector, ladies and gentlemen in your respective capacities. Good morning. First of all, I want to congratulate the Honorable Minister and the PS and the team and UTB positivity. That's what I would want to, in the rethinking, there is need for more people to really celebrate what is there. If we, if we concentrate on what we need everywhere, there is something lacking. But the, 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 the people selling, the itineraries have much more to sell. They have much more to sell. You can now add on the Chitagata Spring. So when people have seen the fives in the Queen Elizabeth, they can have this. So really, in the rethinking, emphasis should be put on what more do we have in addition to the God-given resources. You, of course, even these ones are God-given. And so what should we do to enhance or build on these achievements? There is a strong linkage between tourism and agriculture, and we must leverage it. I made a strong argument in cabinet some time back when there was a debate of COVID, the definition of real economy. We worked with Homer Opportunity to tell people that tourism, without tourism, you have no market for eggs. Without tourism, you have no market for poultry, isn't it? When you are busy selling, I have nothing to, to beg the neighboring countries for, to, to buy the eggs. Because the demand internally will be stimulated by the, by the capacity to, to buy. So we could profile farmers and communities that are ready to supply these lodges. When you go to Fort Porto, that market, one of our thing is Mugusu. Now, all the fresh stuff comes from Mugusu. Mugusu market, you could pick interest in it. So Mugusu market can be branded, can be given a tourism orientation in itself to be, to be the, the, the food basket for, for the whole ecosystem of the players around there. Mugusu market, if I want, even from my home, if I want fresh stuff, I drive to Mugusu market, I buy. I am sure all the lodges around that area buy their food from Mugusu market. So I would request UTB, Mugusu market can be branded as the, you know, we have our local radios in, there, they have their words. You will hear something like, Mukono Munyungu. Mukono Munyungu means you are, you are putting your hand where food comes from. And Nyung is what? A knack. Well, how do we say Nyung in English? A pot. Okay, if that's the pot for food. Because there's a pot for porridge, but there's a pot for food. Uh huh. So Mugusu can be the pot for food of all the tourism. You can take people and say, this is the market. Where the food you ate at Chimpundu, where the food you ate at Chaninga comes from. That can be a selling point. I want to thank you, the tourism players, the ministry, the auto, and UTB, for pushing us government to give more incentives to the community. The VAT relief is welcome, and we congratulate you on it. We want to pray that you continue to justify why you should stay. Because I am hearing people saying, this was a COVID relief. Kindly of continue to put your voice. Continue to put your voice and we also add our voice to see more infrastructure in the parks. We want to see more roads done in the wind area. Because I believe windy, I don't know what the numbers show or, or tell us, but you send more people to windy, perhaps than any other park, if I'm not, I stand to be corrected. We want those roads in Roshaga, in Rohija, Wakton. This must be met, and we will give you support. My second point, we, we, we applaud you on the efforts of marketing, but I believe we need to do more harmonization. We need to understand what communication says, what communication keeps. What communication, what communication works, what communication keeps. It's a struggle for us in the agriculture when FMD hits the country, 
we get a problem with selling milk. We get a problem with selling uh, beef. But sometimes our farmers make alarms which are false. They will tell you there is FMD in Karamoja, when actually it's another disease, isn't it? Same applies to human diseases. I think there is urgent need to discuss on how we communicate even the problems we have. Yes. Let's not blame game each other, but let's go to a room, which one of the minister. I would request that uh, you could be our whip. You invite the Minister of Information. You invite the, the players in the sector, the hotel association, the auto, and the, and the, and the Minister of Health. And uh, because they also have their, their, their protocols on how they, they, they communicate a disease. But aren't, isn't there a disease in the US? Isn't there a disease in the European Union? How do they communicate it? Let us learn about this and agree honestly. Yes, the doctors want money to be increased. Eh? Where will the money come from? Tourism. Yes. So we must agree on this. And we must agree on this if it means the highest political authority to convene all of us into a room. Risk communication must be. We must understand these things. Yes. Yes. How do we tell the world that the few cases of Ebola we have encountered have been controlled and that that should not call for cancellation? Yes. Diseases are everywhere. We've seen uh, viruses. How do we tell the world that uh, uh, when the police is having rioters on the street, like we normally see in the EU and elsewhere, that's not a widespread problem in the whole country. So that's a challenge I find, Honorable Minister, and I, I pledge my support to you on this communication aspect. Uh, the private sector people, don't be angry with government. Let's work together. Let's work together and discuss these issues. Yes. Don't be angry with the Minister of Health, but we can criticize them. But please, come and discuss. If you get the case of Ebola, treat it. Thank you so much. We shall support you. But Uganda is not under... The whole community of Uganda does not have Ebola. Then finally, trying to appeal to the media. Every country has political contradictions. Every citizen has a right to be angry with his government, with his uh, government, isn't it? But you should not be angry with your country. You should not be. You can uh, be angry with me, the Minister of Agriculture, for messing up a sector, isn't it? But you cannot be angry with the green, beautiful Uganda. Get rid of me out of it, if I'm the problem. So this is the angle we need to. Even opposition people, they have business, don't they? They have hotels, don't they? So this is the conversation. We are able to support uh, our commander, the Honorable Minister of Tourism, the PS, Madame Lira and the team, UA and the team, uh, the Hotel Association of Uganda. We are able to, to discuss this. You want you need Minister of Foreign Affairs, just like we need the media to be trained on this communication. You also need Minister of Foreign Affairs. Why don't we have tourism ambassadors deployed? Distinctly deployed. I was the Minister of Labor. We used to have labor attaches. I think they are but not every minister has a, a tourism specific person. How I wish this can be. And it can be, as long as you are able to show the impact it creates to, to this. Uganda Airlines, it's part and parcel of you, of our ecosystem of tourism, isn't it? Yes. I was being told by Chinese friends that starting the 19th of October, there will be a direct flight to Gua, Gua? Say to Gamba, Guangazu. <laughs> <laughs> to Guangazu. <laughs> yes. That's a, that's a plus. Just imagine sitting here nine hours to China and back. So let's, let's give the Chinese uh, that opportunity to come. I'm sure there will be one to London soon because the right 
this is where we are secured. So we need to agree with various actors. There must be there must be a sectoral forum. Just like you hear something called jealous, justice, law, order, something, sector. Police is there, internal affairs is there, the judiciary is there, because they are actions infect each other. <laughs> they keep infecting each other. So we need a forum, a tourism forum. I know we have this uh, program working group of government, but this could be wider, it's a, a tourism forum. Investment should be part of this forum. Government effort should be coordinated. And then we agree on what works for us. Tourism revenues are not only for tour operators, for heaven's sake. These revenues fund everybody. It funds directly the, the people employed in the value chain of tourism, but it comes to the, the national reserves. As agriculture, we are now intensifying uh, large-scale commercial farming. We need a market. The domestic market, first and foremost, is always the most reliable and sustainable one. Then the others can, can come on board. Finally, we need to fund, we need to put more money. Let's agree on a strategy, right, Honorable Minister, of giving you more money. Uganda's beauty is untold the way it should be more. We need to see this on, on CNN. We need to see this on, 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 uh, on BBC. We need to see this on Al Jazeera. How much is it? $10 million a year. Why shouldn't we give it? I am not lamenting. I believe we can do it, isn't it? Yes. If there is money from agriculture, you can chop from my ministry. As, lo as long as it is going, uh, and this is how we can do it. If we give money to tourism, and they create more markets for Uganda, why do I need ma money in agriculture to market agriculture produce? Why should we need money in trade? When this collective marketing will be a plus for all of us? I think this is a, a case that we need to do. And uh, if the private sector can do this, and government does it, uh, we can win. But most importantly, we must also appreciate the private sector people who put in their money to serve this country at private expos. Should really give them a round of applause. Because when they are there, I don't think they just sell their small businesses. They sell the, the bigger destination of our country. So, Honorable Minister, thank you for your invitation. One, I believe we now have a bigger tourism menu. The wildlife is a given, and it continues to be a map of the world. Two, the renewed interest of the people. I don't think Ua is still facing any hostilities as it used to be. There is great, great appreciation of what tourism can do to the country. So the, the communities have bought in. It's a plus. We have more products. My only appeal to our two operators, there is always a reluctance to include on your, this word which defeats me, itinerary. There is always a reluctance to, to put our things in your itinerary. Of course, the other people don't like them. They don't like them because they don't know them. Put, put those unique things. You want to see the big five, yes. There is more for you to see. See the dancing. Go and milk the cows. Peel the matoke. You get it? Mingle the kalo. Go to the falls. You know? So I also request you to engineer new ways of, 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 of sailing. Magnify your, your itineraries, packages, so that you, you have more people staying over, you will have more sales to make, and we shall all be winners. I pledge my support to you, and uh, as also a tourism investor, I pledge, I pledge total compliance with the regulations <laughs> of the sector. This is very important. For we developers, it's very important. When you are developing a lodge, adopt the green concept. Greening, the green architecture should be our principle. When Whatever you are doing, be eco-friendly. I wish we can eliminate all of these bottles from our lodges. This can be a great idea. We shall be tourism smart, and everybody will appreciate 
our, our sector's needs. It's not our sector's needs, it's everybody's needs. I thank you. They who have hosted us today, but with whom we share these uh, smart premises which are in the middle of the city. We are talking about smart cities and tourism. And I just wanted to show you a picture of your city. This is Kampala city, people. This is not London. <laughs> this is your city. And since the theme is rethinking tourism, we need to create a language, a collective consciousness in our city that speaks well of our city. We've baptized it smart city. Smart people living in a smart city. Rethinking is key to development. It is said the people who keep on doing the same thing every day expecting a, a different result as they do that are called insane. When we started this theme of smart city, people told us, stop lying to yourselves. How can you call this city smart? But I am a person of faith. And Judeo-Christianity says, speak of those things which are not as though they are. Call them forth. So we are calling forth a smart city in all its infrastructure, among all its people, in all our five divisions of Kampala. I believe this is a vision that can unpack. Not in the future, it can unpack in this generation. Nobody loves to do tourism in a dirty city. They visit cities because they are smart cities. So I believe, and that is my great call to this assembly this morning, that let's speak of our city as a smart city. Not the other cities which we visited. We all recently visited London during the burial, during the death of Her Majesty the Queen Elizabeth II. We visited on the screens and we enjoy the beauty of the infrastructure. We want to unpack that smart city of Kampala in our generation. Can somebody agree with me? Yes. Why do we say smart city? This is a phrase we have articulated that meets, that, uh, that meet, meets the needs and expectations of city residents and indeed our tourists. The phrase embraces our KCCA vision, which is to be a vibrant, attractive, and sustainable city, and our mission of delivering quality services to the people of Kampala. The phrase smart city is a strategy phrase to include every stakeholder in what we are doing. Our goal is that we shall create an appreciation around the three core pillars of a smart city. The three core pillars of a smart city, which we are championing in this campaign, are technology, infrastructure, and people. Technology, infrastructure, and people. And we're using the acronym of TIP, T-I-P, Technology, Infrastructure, and People. Under technology, we would like to make it easier for people to do business. KCCA technological applications, we, we place a strong emphasis on automation of processes in service delivery. We are so far applying technology in revenue collection, in development permits, in building permits, procurement, traffic administration, sanitation through the Weyonje app, city addressing so that every house in the city can have a proper address as opposed to, to saying next to the big fene or to the big mango tree and also in health and education services our strategy is that each of our service directorates will leverage the use of technology not as something as to be used in the future but something to be used today if you need a building permit, you can do it from the privacy of your home. If you need to know about our schools, you can do it from the privacy of your home. The second pillar is infrastructure. And here we are talking about a smart 
and clean city in all infra its infrastructure. You've noticed that we are removing illegal structures and decongesting the city, and we are creating alternative spaces for trade. The government has intentionally given us a budget so that we create new trading spaces so that people stop crowding the streets. We are calling upon citizens to take responsibility for their infrastructure in lighting, in painting, and others. We are also calling upon people to take care of their waste, of their rubbish. Smartness begins at home. The city is smart because the infrastructure you take care of, that I take care of, is smart. It's a collective responsibility. And our third pillar is people. And maybe this is the greatest emphasis in smart city and tourism. Why people? Smart people is about promoting a smart way of working with all city stakeholders. The city is like a family. We all come to the city to earn. We all come to the city because we want to advance commercially. So we want our various stakeholders in transport, the vendors on the streets, in the markets, the business people, the bar owners, we would like to work together in a smart way. We are right now getting a lot of complaints about noise pollution. And guess who it is coming from? You have guessed. It is coming from you. Somebody somewhere is not acting smart in the way they are doing business. It is good to have a, a bar, but why don't you regulate the noise? Because the city holds us all. We all come to sit to the city, we sleep in the city, you want to work in the city and have a bar, but you are allowing the noise pollution to be consumed by, <laughs> by the people three kilometers from where you are doing it. That is not going to be allowed. And the smart cities and tourism, we are curbing down on noise pollution very, very strongly. We are saying, let's do it the smart way. There are smart ways of doing business, whatever business you are doing. Let's think, let's work, let's act, and let's talk smart. The city accommodates all of us, different types of people. We invite our guests, our tourists, to a city that's working for all of us. We can coexist, and everyone should take responsibility. So those are the three pillars, the core pillars, that we are working on to, to promote tourism in the city. And we are saying also that we need to encourage city-to-city -city tourism. I came across a, a very, <clears throat> very, what's the word I should use? The way the, way the, the ad governance is done in London is that they have a, an assembly which oversees what the political leaders, the mayors, are doing in the city. And in our discussion with the London Assembly Chair, we were saying, let's do city, to city tourism around governance, around the way we govern the cities. I can envisage us, Kampala, visiting Gulu, or Jinja, visiting Imbarara, all the cities to learn and to share. And when you know a political leader visits, they don't go alone. Politicians travel with the whole city. They go with two buses, through three buses, learning about governance, but also visiting other cities so that we share what are the uniqueness, what is the uniqueness in Ginger City, which we do not have in Kampala City. We are members of Aston, African Smart Towns Network. This is a network of African cities that use digital tools to address local and global challenges. We are in partnership with various cities around Africa so that we promote the way our city works using digital tools. We are also members of WIGO, which is the World Smart Sustainable Cities Organization, which was established in 2010. It brings together cities and other local governments smart tech solution providers and national regional institutions committed to the transformation of cities 
into smart, sustainable city, cities. So we in Kampala City are saying we are going to work very closely with the, the Ministry of Tourism. As we speak now, we have signed the MOU for Tourism Development with Uganda World, UWA, and UTB. We are hosting and supporting tourism and social events to drive tourist traffic in the city. We are emphasizing the smartness in our infrastructure. We are about to launch a, um, a project worth $288 million worth to improve about 70 kilometers of road, uh, improve lighting around the city, drainage, walkways, smart transport, the non-motorized uh, walkway, flyovers, new roads and traffic control systems. All these are geared towards positioning Kampala as a vibrant, attractive and sustainable city. Kampala is an exciting capital with a lot of potential for tourism development. In the future, in the very near future, we will be launching a very exciting activity that we want to invite you to be part of, and that will be the Smart City Expo. At an opportune time, we'll speak more about this. But as I conclude, smart cities and tourism, it's not about infrastructure and it's not about technology, although those are popular. Smart cities and tourism is about you. It's about people. Ugandans are known as the, some of the most hospitable people. And we in Kampala, we want to champion that as a community, to be aware of ourselves and build a consciousness around the smart city, not around infrastructure only, but the way we think, the way we talk, the way we work, and the way we act. I thank you very much.
these facilities will be determined by the contribution of the Ugandan authorities and all players who are active in the Ugandan touristic sector. It is a kind of a scaffold. Uh, it might help you a lot. Tourism, I think. 
As part of activities to commemorate World Tourism Day 2022, the ministry organized competitions for pupils and students for primary, secondary, tertiary, and universities under the theme of rethinking tourism. The competitions registered a total of 37 institutions. The primary schools competed in cultural dances, secondary schools in poetry and tourism quiz, while the tertiary institutions and universities in tourism quiz and in the innovation uh, challenge. This was done to interest the young people in tourism. The best way to ensure markets for our products is to expose our people very early in age to appreciate tourism and to be able to conserve it as well. Now in these competitions, the following emerged as winners. For primary schools, the first was Sir Apolo Kagwa Mengo. The second was Musega Preparatory School. The third was City Parents Primary School. And as the secondary schools category, the first one was Chinawa High School Ugongo. The second was Grace High School. The third was Alina Biri Senior Secondary School. The tertiary institutions and universities. The first one was St. Lawrence University, Kampala, followed by Makerere University, and finally the Uganda Wildlife Research and Training Institute, an institution that is under the ministry. The winners will be awarded with a trophy, a certificate, a boat and a trip to Ngamba Island for the university. Uh, for UWE and the secondary, uh, for UWE, this award goes for the primary um, category. Then the source of the Nile Award, which is a trip, a whole day in Jinja City, will go to the secondary schools. is awarded to Uganda Wildlife Research Training Institute for participating in World Tourism Day 2022 school competitions and emerging the second runners up. Uh, Makere University, uh, which emerged the first runners up. Makere University. Could you please come to the podium? Waiting for the seniors to join us so that you test very well. If you can't test, we'll just you away from here. We congratulate Makere University for being the first runner-up in the World Tourism Day 2022 school competitions. Congratulations. St. Lawrence. St. Lawrence University, Uganda. Congratulations. All good. St. Lawrence, oh yeah. St. Lawrence, oh yeah. This is winning team. <laughs> Thank you for this opportunity to showcase our talent as St. Lawrence University students. Up in the competitions. 
uh, for the secondary category was welcome. Congratulations to Cardinal Secondary School, who are the second runner-up for the secondary school competition. Congratulate you for being the first runner up in the second school category. Yeah. Chinawa High School, Bongo. Yeah. Um, Overall winner, Chinawa High School. Big congratulations. We as Chinawa High School, Chinawa Bongo Campus, the main campus, would like to thank the Almighty Allah who enabled us to take on this. First of all, it was our first time to join the competitions, but by God's grace, we managed to bring this. And we won. Yes, we just thank the Almighty. And we thank the Ministry of Tourism, World Life, and the Activities for such an opportunity. We don't like to worry. Mm. Big congratulations to city parents for being the second runners up in the primary school category. participate in these competitions. We thank our head teacher, our directors, and our trainers for letting us participate in these competitions, for training us. And we promise next time we will be the first team. Oh, yeah. <laughs> the second runners up, Mr. Graham, Treasury, Mr. Graham, Mr. And the overall winner, Sir Apollo Kagwa Mengo. We thank the Almighty God for helping us with this competition. And we hope that the next time we are even more better than this. Thank you. For the coming of the initiation session in the eastern part of Uganda. Isonja is first round of Imbalo, where the candidates are prepared and tested for initiation. In Emba is the final phase of Imbalo, where the initiates are welcomed back to the community as triumphant men. Imbalo is where they circumcise, and, is, and Mwaga is where they don't circumcise. Tourist attractions in the eastern regions are near a stone site, Elgon National Park, Mountain Elgon, Circumcision Under Culture, and CP Falls. However, we have other tourist attractions in our community in Uganda, according to regions. Those are the northern we have Makshan Falls, the southwestern Mountain Mufumbiro, Mountain Mufumbiro, Gahinga National Park, and Gwindi National Park. In the western we have Queen Elizabeth National Park, and in the central we have the Victoria and the Equator. Please enjoy one year and explore Uganda, the part of Africa. <laughs>